Hello and a very warm welcome to Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And today we're taking a new departure and exploring the world of advertising because my guest is a woman who is universally viewed as the first lady of German advertising. And here she is, Karen Heumann. Thank you very much for joining Universally. us today. <laughs> you liked that, didn't you? Yeah, she liked wow. that. Yeah. <laughs> Good, yeah. Now, Karen Heumann is a board member and head of strategy at the very prestigious Hamburg-based agency Jung von Matt, which has accounts for the likes of Mercedes-Benz, eBay, AOL and Bild Zeitung, Germany's biggest newspaper. I should, however, add that she was, until not too long ago, the only woman to be on the board of a German ad agency. So, plenty to talk about, including the following topics. Leading lady Karen Heumann's career in the ad business has so far been exemplary. So are other women now finally following in her footsteps? Germany indoors. You want to know where and how Mr and Mrs Average spend most of their time? Well, sitting in the average living room, of course. And Germany outdoors allotments have long been viewed as rather stuffy places here in Germany. Suddenly, though, they're all the rage among trendy young families. This lady, Karen Heumann, she's been studying me very closely while I've been reading that. And um, <laughs> my, first question, <laughs> my first question for you is, yeah, um, I don't know much. I'll confess openly. I don't know much about the advertising business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're here. You can tell me a bit about it. You work in it. You work very hard. You're very successful. What makes it so fascinating? What makes it so exciting? Because it's about, uh, I think it's because we like build up dreams and, and we work with things like desire and, 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 and it, I think it's, for me, it's the dream aspect of it. I think there are lots of other people who would say something completely different, which is, which is advertising, because every advertiser ha has, I think, a different perspective on it, a very personal perspective. And I like things to be wanted. I, I like to... Not to seduce myself, but I like to to think about seduction strategies. And um, mm. but, 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 but whenever but, you talk about it, people think because all, I think almost all people, at least in Germany, think that advertising is something superficial and something they don't like and something they don't want. And and so when you say I, I would like to seduce people, it's like, oh, but I don't want to be seduced by you. So it's something <laughs> you you don't want to talk about. But personally, I like doing that, doing communication strategies. You're very ambitious. Mm. You nod, no doubt about it. You I don't know. I don't you know. know. Yeah, and you honestly, don't know. My, if you ask my parents, they would say no, not at all. They'd say you're lazy. Uh, maybe I'm lazy. I, I don't know, but I'm not that ambitious. You have this reputation that you work, you know, I seven, work, se a lot. I work a lot, but you I'm not very ambitious. What, what drives you? What's the drive? Doing things. I don't know. It's very, very difficult. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised myself that I work so hard. I didn't think when I was younger that I would work so hard, but. I, and I don't want to use the word fun. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> but I like it. You like it? Yeah, it's not work. Yeah. Sometimes it's work. But and most of the time... It's, it's, it's a man's world that you work in. It's a man's world from, from the, the organisation side of it. It's a man's world, but I'm, I'm not... I, the things I'm doing are not in a man's world because I'm th uh, lots of times my target is, is a female audience. And I'm thinking of... What women want, but that's just what this I is, don't this, is, yeah, this, is, this is because my what, what, I, what I'm thinking about is not is not what all the men around me is about strategies for maybe lots of times uh, women. Yeah. Yeah. Presumably, half Presumably. of the half of the consumers that you are, are trying women. to sell products to must be women. I would guess it, it, yeah. absolutely. And those who decide what to buy are almost always women. Uh, I think it's true for almost everything except cars. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's very important to know how women think. So why, until recently, were you the only woman who has made it to the top in the, in the ad business? How do you explain that? Is that a knew, problem in advertising or is that a problem in Germany? It's a problem in Germany. It's not a problem in advertising. I think mm. it's, not, it's not only for advertising that there are no women in, 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 in the boards of, of uh, German industry. 
it's a German, it's a European problem. It's not, it's not that other countries are that much better. But it is well known that it is, it is a good deal more difficult for women in Germany yes. than, for example, in the Anglo-Saxon world to break through the glass ceiling and to make it into the higher levels of companies. That's true. It's much more exotic. You are really exotic when, you, when you're a woman in, in a board. Um, but honestly, and I thought a lot about it, I don't know how, where are the structure, structural problems are. They are certainly that we don't have, uh, that it's difficult to put your children into, into uh, um, day school or to, 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 to leave them just there like in France. But it's not the only problem, I think. I think it's a mental thing as well. Mm -hmm. But that would go too deep. I think um, well, listen, it's a very, very dangerous subject. When you start to talk about it, you mm -hmm. get almost immediately criticised by... <laughs> very strange and by, radical by. people. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me, you, you say it's a difficult subject. Yeah. You do, I, mm. I don't want to pry, but mm. I know lots of women in my field, in mm -hmm. journalism, mm -hmm. who are successful. Yes. But very few of them, certainly the majority, do not... The majority of the people I know who've made it to the top, women, mm -hmm. in journalism, and I'm sure it's the same in your business, do not have children. Yes. Is that the price that a successful woman has to pay? That's, it's, yes, I, I don't know if it's the price that you have to pay, but you just can't get any. It's like, it's like a decision that comes naturally. It sound, doesn't sound naturally because it's certainly more natural to have a child, but it's, it, you just can't. There's no possibility to, to have one. And then you just decide, no, no, no. And then one day, you're, it's not a sad subject because it's not it that. It is a bitter truth. But though, it's a bitter it? truth. It's true yeah. that it's, 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 it, it would be very difficult to have one. Very, very difficult. And it's almost, it's, 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 it's al already very difficult. And it makes it even more difficult. And your male so, colleagues at the top level? Yeah. They have kids at home? They all have kids, yes. Yes. It's interesting, isn't yes, it? Yes, they have yeah. kids. They have, they have kids and they have a, almost always a wife which is at home. OK. Mm. Mm. Um, let's talk a little bit now about, uh, about how they work at Karen Hoymans Agency. One thing is that they have come up with a fantastic idea. We've seen it a little bit already in the first report. An idea for getting as close as they can to Mr and Mrs Average here in Germany. And the idea is to create what is called Germany's most typical living room. Here's more. 22 square meters, a wall unit, and a three-piece sofa set. This is how the average German living room is supposed to look. Since 2004, the advertising pros in Hamburg have used it for conferences. Karin Heumann and her team evaluated statistics and surveys and chose the most frequently purchased furnishings and accessories. They even invented a family for it, the Müllers, Claudia, Thomas, and their son Jan. They celebrate birthdays and family events, they subscribed to magazines, and in 2009, they bought a flat screen monitor to replace their old TV. The current sofa set is sand colored. Thomas's computer workstation will be upgraded soon. The statistics are updated continuously, and the living room changes slightly. There seems to be just one constant Claudia's collection of cat figurines. It's very nice, it's very cute. Was it your idea? Yes. Yes? Yes, the idea was that we have like a like a, a gym, where a gym. you where you <laughs> where you can where you can train your research uh, c capacities that like for a journalist. So because what you're we, saying, because it, the strategists always have to do research and have yeah. to find out things, and I wanted to have something where they where they really play research, the, okay. the trainees, the so young it ones. It's not just a trick, it's not just no, it's an not advertising an trick, not. it, it, it was And it wasn't made for PR, it yeah. was really made, and they, it, it was like some trainees found out that uh, the, the average living room would be like this. And it was so funny, it wasn't funny, it was just so compelling that we th thought we have to, to invest in it and we have well. to really build it. Build okay. it up. And the thing we learn, I mean, there's lots yeah. of lovely little touches, real little insights mm -hmm. that are very small, but mm -hmm. the main scenario is that the family are gathered around the TV set. Yes, they're gathered like since... Like a shrine. I, I like a shrine. I think yeah. since, since 1970 they are gathered around the shrine. Mm -hmm. in, in former times they were just sitting around the table. And one of their hobbies was to watch outside the window, which was really cute. Ah, when you when you look yeah. into, back into the 60s, I think the se seventh thing they liked most was watching out of our, of our window, ah. which is now <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, inimaginable. Well, you look out and of the window now, you see other people watching TV. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they watch TV, you see this blue light, you know, glimmering yeah. light. And um, yes, and now they're watching TV. 
Is there any way, because you've, you've not just created the living room, you, it's the living room of Mr and Mrs Müller. Mrs., Mr. They're a family, Mrs. they have a child. Yes, yeah. they have a child. Typical German mm -hmm. name, Müller, Jan. the most typical Jan German Müller. name. Mm -hmm. What is different? What makes a German consumer different from a consumer anywhere else in Europe? Is there anything? The, the surprising thing is that they are much more alike uh, than you think. Oh. Uh, we did the Austrian living room and the Swiss, Swiss uh, living room, which are almost the same living rooms, and that was a surprise. We were disappointed because you wanted to point out what makes them different, yeah. but they were just almost the same. I don't know for England. I think England <laughs> would be a bit different. But it's, it's almost the same. I think it, it'll be almost the same size and almost the same things in it because we are much more the same than we think, which is good for Europe. But... but. I mean, one idea, I mean, when you yeah. mention the UK, for example, I'm sure people would spend a lot more time at the local pub than people in Germany. Probably, my, yes, my maybe, thing, yes, certainly, I, yes. I guess it, German consumers are perhaps stay-at-home consumers. They stay at home. They, uh -huh. they love cosiness. They have a special Cosiness. word for it. Gemütlichkeit. They have Gemütlichkeit, which mm. is... Which, they have lots of words around Gemütlichkeit, like Geborgenheit, Gemütlichkeit, even yeah. Heimat yeah, yeah. Is, a, is a cosy word. Yeah. Uh, they love to, to cocoon, as we mm -hmm. call it today mm -hmm. in marketing. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, well, that's the special term, that's cocoon. That's cocooning. That's it's cocooning. It's cocooning and staying at home. Snuggling up playing with the games, family. Snuggling up. Um, uh -huh. and, and having a little pizza in front of the, uh, the TV. <laughs> OK. And um, one thing that's very important for people in the advertising business, I know, is product loyalty. I've mm -hmm. got the feeling that product loyalty is not quite... You know, people aren't as loyal as they used to be. Are German consumers loyal, or are they beginning no. now to sort of just change their, 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 their preferences they very rapidly. They've already begun in the, I don't know, 80s to, to, oh, yeah. to not be loyal anymore. It depends on the categ category. They are more loyal, to, for instance, to, to car brands than to toilet paper. But I've got to, it, it, that's more what, well, loyal that's, to car brands than to <laughs> paper brands. Well, OK, you do buy but, a car. But that's, that's, I mean, that's, that is what we call involvement. It's, it's things that you are more involved in that you are more faithful to. You know? okay. OK, so we've heard, mm. we've heard about involvement, we've heard about cocooning. There's another form of advertising that we're going to take a look at now. It's called viral marketing. Here is your introduction. On average, Germans sit in front of the TV for some 220 minutes a day. That means enough time for lots of commercials. But the natural enemy of TV advertising is always at hand, the remote control. Most marketing experts think TV as a long-standing advertising outlet is still indispensable, but they've been searching for new ways to reach potential customers, especially on the Internet. Advertising messages get through to people less and less, because on the one hand, more advertisements exist and are put into circulation, so people become immune to them. And on the other, they lack a certain credibility. Humorous clips like this enraged office worker are spread in the millions via internet video platforms, a sort of digital word of mouth. Advertisers want to take advantage of that because what friends and acquaintances recommend seems more credible than straightforward promotion. The strategy is called viral marketing or viral advertising. Marketing strategists then thought about whether this phenomenon of proliferation might be used consciously to target people with a high networking potential, and a whole new discipline emerged. We permanently tattooed their foreheads with our name. This is an early example of viral marketing. Often, black humor that goes way beyond good taste is especially memorable, and the message gets in through the back door. But we're on a mission. Unlike expensive TV commercials, loading clips onto the web costs nothing. Advertisers are working to make sure their messages reach as many people as possible. Karen, for me, the most important words in that report were share this video. Mm -hmm. That's a button that you can press. Mm -hmm. And my son, who is a teenager, is probably going to be more likely to press that button than I am. Mm -hmm. Am I right in making that assumption? Is I don't it... know if you, he's more likely because he spends more time in the internet maybe than you do. I think you spend a lot of time because you have your own blog, but, but l let's say... <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. But who does any of that? It's I'm out. It's out in the I'm open. It's actually. Yes, no, I spend a lot more time than my son, probably, probably ultimately in the reading internet, novels but or something. A normal but the, person your age wouldn't spend as much time, and so he would maybe not press that button as often as your son does. But uh, the, uh, but when you like a video and you want to share it, I think it's a, it isn't a question of age. Okay. So, but what I, the, my point is, viral advertising. Yeah. yeah probably uh, impacts more with people who are in the younger generation? I don't think so, because uh -huh. when somebody thinks it's viral, it's, it's, it's almost a, a category. When something is viral, it, it just means that it's spreading itself. Mm -hmm. And if it's, it, it is viral when your target group is interested in it. So, it's, you know, of course, young people are more into the internet and they share more things, but if I do a good viral strategy, it could even touch you. And have, it could be you... like the spreader of, of the virus. It could be you. Mm -hmm. It depends on the quality of the strategy. It could even hit me. It could it even, even catch hit me. You. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, so course. you do develop viral strategies? Of course. Of course. How long have you I been think doing I, that I for? Want to, be, to be honest, I think mm. they are not the, those categories. Are, I don't know if, if they ever exist, existed, but it's like being viral is, is, is not something technical. It's, it's also something... That's, it, it, it's the idea of something that spreads without, without doing a lot. And something which is interesting and relevant spreads itself. That was always the case. Mm -hmm. And now we have more, yeah, more means. Be, we have more it, means it to spread. It used to be word of mouth. Yes, of course. We have, now we have more means to, to spread. But it, viral, it, it was, it, it's like when something good, it is viral. OK. Yeah. I'd like to talk... We've talked about that. We, so you do a lot of viral marketing. I'd yeah. like also to talk about... Just to give the viewers an example, another example of how you do things. Tell the viewers about the campaign that you did on behalf of Hamburg's Philharmonic Orchestra. I mm -hmm. thought that was a very interesting campaign. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the Hamburg Philharmonic Orchestra is, 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 is known in the city, people love it, uh, it's, it's like a, a cultural, um, it, it, it belongs to Hamburg, but they always will need new people and new target groups, younger target groups and so on and so forth. And, and we thought we have to do something which, which is of course cheaper than doing a big ad campaign and buying media. That's what we don't want to do at the moment, we don't want to buy media, we just want to earn it by, by, by being viral, yeah, you just get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and this is why we why we did something very, very, very special, which I cannot really good explain in English because we put a concert uh, graben, which is in front of of, of the, the, or, the, the the orchestra pit. The, yeah, the yeah. orchestra pit. We, mm -hmm. we we put it uh, over Hamburg. We like there are the flutes and there is the mm -hmm. the not the guitar. So you spread but it the, right spread out spread across the city. Across the city, and mm -hmm. the, and and the musicians of of the Philharmonic Orchestra are playing at the same time, and you could see them in the internet in real time. And Simon Young, who is uh, the, the, the the chief mm -hmm. of, of uh, was standing on the Michel, which is our our Hamburg uh, tower exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was uh, and she was uh, dirigée she, mm. uh, she was conducting, conducting. Yeah, she was like conducting that. and 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 all Hamburg was was living this with the with the orchestra it was in the internet and it was like spreading but it wasn't it wasn't expensive it was just logistic logistically it was very 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 right, very okay. difficult but it was something that was involving it didn't cost a lot but it had a very large impact and it's beautiful Great when you idea. have somebody standing on that tower and uh, and and those people playing in the same time somewhere else i like it very much yeah now another thing that this lady does when she's not working 70 hours a week is she gets out in her garden uh, we're going to talk a little bit about gardening and it's an inter i'm going to introduce this with another long and interesting german word we like to get them in on the show the word this time is schrebergarten <laughs> in english an allotment they're very popular here they are Planting season in the Climbing Rose Allotment Gardens in Cologne. This is one of 15,000 allotment garden associations in Germany. Nowadays, young families are holding almost half of the plots here. We are experiencing a radical change in age compared to the allotment gardeners of the past. Many of them are now over 70, but we're now getting younger people. That doesn't mean I don't like old people, but young ones are the allotment gardeners of tomorrow. Depending on which German state it's in, leasing a plot costs between 100 and 400 euros a year. In urban areas, waiting lists are lengthy. New amateur gardeners can benefit from the older one's experience. 
Wir haben ja gar keine Ahnung von so einem Garten. We really don't have a clue about gardening. They've given us a few tips about what we can plant, and they gave us a rake because they saw we couldn't do much without one, and a wheelbarrow to carry stuff in. Vegetables and fruit are compulsory. In addition to ornamental plants and a lawn, that's specified in the German Allotment Gardens Act. The Zuta family are spending their second summer here. And there's always something new to learn. We'll put you here. And the magnolia there. Not magnolia, hydrangea. Oh, that's a hydrangea. There you go, men and flowers. Germany's allotment gardens are becoming more modern, and garden gnomes and flowered borders are on the way out. Even the sheds are changing. It used to be rustic oak in old-fashioned German brown, but now we've painted it pale blue and white. There are more than a million allotment gardens in Germany, and young and old alike agree that nothing beats a barbecue amidst plants you've grown yourself. Okay, Karen, I'd like to play a little game with you. I am the head of an umbrella organization representing all the allotments in your home city of Hamburg. And the problem we have is we feel that our allotments have the wrong image, that they're not sort of very modern, up-to-date, sexy. And I want you to give them a new image, a new modern, snazzy image. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, do, I don't have to help you because they are already very modern and... Snozzy, <laughs> and, I, 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 and I don't think that they have any left because because everybody wants it now, as as your uh. film was saying. Because because people love to garden, and oh, and oh. <laughs> would you would you send me away and say your product is already selling very yes, well? Yes, I would. Thank I you. would. Okay. This is very important um, to say because when somebody doesn't have a problem, I tell him. Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, here's one thing that I would like to know personally. One of the most uh, best known slogans that you have here in Germany is for a chain of electronics goods stores, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And the slogan is Geiz ist geil, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, Sounds uh, very German, doesn't it? Well, it, it could, mm -hmm. it, it, stingy is sexy, you could say mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. It drives me mad, mm -hmm. yeah? Tell me this, are you happy that it drives me mad? Is that a good thing for you? Mm, it was a good thing, thing for our client because it really, really worked well, to be honest. Um, but it's, in the Bible, it's not something positive. Uh, Geiz, is, is, is it greed? Mm -hmm. And, and... Uh, I'm a bit ambiguous about it, but it it worked. It, it worked, worked like hell. Yeah, <laughs> it did. It's the... a word to say. <laughs> it worked like hell. Okay, uh. something else that works like hell. I can guarantee you is our quiz. We have a quiz at the end okay. of the show. Yeah, relatively quick questions, relatively quick answers, please. Are Germans spenders or savers? Savers. What's the most typical German name? Müller or Schmidt? Müller. How many? How many Müllers are there in Germany? I don't know. Oh, mm. God. I, do you know what I thought? I thought you would know that. I thought it would just come straight no. out that you no, would know no, that no, there no. are 703,000 no. Müllers. Yes, yeah? I thought maybe a million, but yes, um, 700,000. Should there be quotas for women at work to make sure that they get into higher positions? Yes. Yes. Garden or balcony? Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Berlin it's or possible. Ham Berlin or Hamburg? Berlin. France or Germany? Oh, I know you both. love both. both. I know you love mm. both. Uh, here's the big question, Karen. Advertising. And Inf England. And England. <laughs> information or illusion? What is advertising? Information or illusion? It's information. Information. She's mm. confident. OK, that's mm. the lot for our guest today. She's been the stimulating, thoughtful and charming Karen Hoyman. If you've enjoyed our company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, tschüss. <laughs>